morning everybody. My name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Bean Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I do and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is Sunday. It is November 29th. So we're almost at the end of November and into December. I can't believe how close we are to the end of the year. And today is my 71st floss tube video. So I just want to give you guys all a big welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, then um, welcome. And I hope that you enjoy what you see and want to stick around and hit like and subscribe and come back. And um, I have some, I think, cool stuff happening in the next month. So um, hopefully I will have a lot of people who are here for that. And um, if you are a, a continuing returning subscriber, that's the word I was looking for, um, you guys know how much I appreciate you and thank you for uh, coming and visiting with me every week and sending me the lovely messages that you send me and all the good vibes out in the world and thank you so much. So this is Thanksgiving weekend here in the States. Um, I saw so many other people on YouTube who were like, oh, Thanksgiving for America and and I realize I do have I have um, subscribers from all over the world so I'm sorry if I keep saying happy Thanksgiving and you don't celebrate Thanksgiving but um, if you did I hope it was a good one if you didn't I hope you had a good uh, entrance into your weekend and um, I had a very enjoyable time as I've talked about I went over to my brother's house my brother and sister-in-law are my um, very best friends aside from my friend Tracy who's in Pittsburgh who I love but she's far away <laughs> so I love them and I can see them um, and um, we decided actually a couple weeks ago that I was gonna spend the night just to make things easier and you know kind of be fun and I'm actually really glad that we had decided that because um, in the interim time because of COVID we had kind of a um, curfew put on California, so we're supposed to not be out in the world past 10 o'clock. Um, so, you know, I would have had to kind of go home early and, you know, it was just actually really nice while we're eating dinner and, you know, you get that, you're eating dinner and you're tired and you're comfortable feeling that I didn't have to jump in the car and drive home. I mean, it's not that far of a drive, it's only half an hour, but, you know, it was nice. Um, I gave my, my kitty two big bowls of food and he was fine for one night on his own although he was a little bit um, demanding when I got home first he ignored me for a few minutes and then he was all over me um, and uh, he actually didn't even eat half of his food so he wasn't starving by any means although he acted like you know like I had been gone for a week and how rude was that <laughs> um, but yeah it was just a, it was a really nice Thanksgiving um, we learned a few things. We were joking about it. So last year, the plan was to order a meal, and um, there was some mess up that actually it never actually got ordered, and we didn't find that out until Thanksgiving Day. So um, they said that last year, Aaron and Stacy and I were talking about last year. They learned that you have to actually go to the end of the <laughs> the ordering process. This year we did get the order in and we learned that um, it all comes cold and you still have to cook it. Um, so yeah, so the turkey was cooked but it was like cold and it still took like an hour and a half, two hours to cook. So I'm not 100% sure what the advantage is with doing that um, because cooking a turkey from scratch doesn't involve much more than what cooking that turkey did. Um, so I don't know, maybe next year um, and then we found out too that like the two older kids don't even like turkey because they tasted it and then didn't eat it. So we were talking about maybe next year getting like a smaller turkey or like, you know, something like that for the adults and then a chicken for the kids and you know, um, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is obviously. It's a whole year away so we'll see what happens but um, even though it took longer to prepare than we expected, it still was a very delicious meal and it was, you know, the company was wonderful and a good time was had by all. Um, one thing I did want to share with you, which, you know, is one of, another one of my sister-in-law's, like, super creative things. Um, she found these, like, turkey things and they're, you know, they're little hats that you can wear. Um, but they're all blank and 
So her idea was that everybody had to fill out their turkey before dinner sometime and fill in all of your, what you're thankful for. And then you could color it or not color it. So, um, we sat at the table, um, she and I and two of the kids sat at the table and colored our turkeys. Everybody else just wrote their stuff in. <laughs> but I think that was like such a great idea because, you know, usually on Thanksgiving you'll go around the table and say what you're thankful for and it's just kind of almost an embarrassing way to do it and like you're on the spot so you end up saying the same things and this kind of forced you to like really think about like who in your life are you thankful for and what things in your life are you thankful for and um and it was nice. It was nice to be able to write it down and it was I think it's nice to be able to have this and keep it. So I'm gonna put it on my board. Um you guys have seen my I have a little magnet board over there and I have my like Valentine's hearts that the kids gave me and I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick this up there too. So um I will look at it and remember that I do have a lot of people and things in my life to be thankful for. I have Floss Tube up here and all of my wonderful subscribers. Um and um that, you know, when, when I'm feeling blue, that I can remember that there are really a lot of good things in my life and, and I need to keep that in mind. So, so that was basically Thanksgiving and then, um, I got home Friday late afternoon, um, and did a little straightening around my house, not a lot because it's me and you guys know I'm a terrible housekeeper. Um, but I did take away, uh, I took my, um, my, um, seasonal tree. I took all of the orange and yellow and fall and pumpkins off of it and I redressed it for sort of wintry December, Hanukkah, January, uh, stuff. Um, and I actually posted a picture of that on Instagram, so if you are interested in seeing it prior to my Hanukkah videos, um, you can look on there. Um, I am planning on filming my Hanukkah videos over on that side of my apartment, which again is like, you know, not that far away, but, um, so hopefully you'll be able to see the tree and everything. I mean, I don't have a ton of decorations up, but I did kind of like put a few things out and everything. So, um, so I did that yesterday and now I can look at that and it feels a little bit more wintry and out of the fall and I shuffled around a few of my candles and I'm pulling out the, the more pepperminty, snowy scented type things. Not that it snows around here at all. I mean, it's in the seventies, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm in that cool crisp mode now that we're like in December. And um, I'm checking the weather report every day because we're hoping for snow in Lake Arrowhead before we go at the end of the year. And um, from everything I've read, we have a 25% chance of getting to be there when there's snow. So hopefully that will be something that we get to experience. I know the weather will be cold and crisp regardless. And so we will have fun hanging out there um, regardless of whether it's snowing. But snowing will definitely be the icing on the cake. So hopefully... Hopefully we'll get that little bit of snow. Okay, so I mentioned my Hanukkah videos. I have been prepping for them. Um, I spent a good portion of time yesterday. Um, I putting I got a, a little notebook, a blue notebook, and I um, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna use it for totally, but I got it kind of as a you know a, an aid for my floss tube, and I did um, put together kind of a. An idea of what I'm going to do each night and what I'm going to talk about. And um, I have my Hanukkah blessings here because although I have been saying them my whole life and know them by heart, I know that I'm going to get on camera and feel stupid and not know that I'm saying it right. And, you know, if I'm filming, I do want to actually say the blessing correctly. <laughs> so I have them in here and, yeah, I'm getting prepped for these daily videos that I'm going to do for the eight days. So, um, I guess it's not as intense as people who are doing Flossmas or Vlogmas and are going to do something for every day of the entire year, but you're going to get eight days of uh, videos from me. And I have a feeling they're not going to be super short. They're going to be like a normal length video every day. So, um, hopefully that will be something fun, but I am getting ready for that. Um, 
So I think that that's it for the preamble here and we can get into the stitching. And then um, I don't have a ton to show you as far as stitching, but then at the end of the video, the big thing is again prep for my Hanukkah videos. I have all of the things that are going to be part of the giveaways during that week of Hanukkah. And um, I'm doing it today because I want to give everybody a little bit of extra time to be able to um, make a comment on this video and say all the keywords that you're interested in so that then when I go and pull, you've had enough time um, to, to do basically your entry. Um, because if I waited till next week when it's actually December, it would only be like four days before Hanukkah starts and then... Um, yeah, so people wouldn't have that much time to go back to this video and and make your entries. So I wanted to give that little bit of extra time. I'm going to probably just pull all the names um, at the beginning um, before I start doing any of my videos and I'm just going to have a list of them. So you definitely are going to want to get the um, comments in before the... Um, well, Hanukkah starts on the 10th, so probably before the 9th. You're going to want to get everything into this video so that I can go ahead and do the random comment picker and get all of the winners. But we'll talk about that in about 10 minutes. So, okay, so uh, projects that I worked on, I did have an FFO. It's actually a new start and a finish and an FFO all in one little project for my uh, seasonal tree. And I did the Mill Hill Cat in a Box. And he turned out so cute. And I did, I was doing the beading on this last night when I was on a Zoom call with my brother and niece and nephew playing D&D. &D. And then I used the gift that I got of the, um, the quarter to make a little bit of cord with the extra floss. And just as a little hangy, hangy doodad, I put felt on the back. This is the sticky felt. So... Hopefully it stays good. It might need to be end up being glued around the edges, but for right now I think it's fine. There. So cute. And I didn't realize how fast these things would go. I mean, really, I started stitching it, and I I think it only took like two nights of stitching, and then I did the beading yesterday. And um, I'm really happy with it. It's so cute. So I'm really happy actually in general that I've been getting these Mill Hill ornaments because they stitch up really cute, uh, really quick and they're adorable. So this will be my first piece of stitching on my winterized tree. Um, I don't know if anything else will get on it this year. Maybe I'll work on something else for December. Um, or maybe I will go ahead and start at Mill Hill uh, for February for Valentine's. Okay, so I had another new start, and I'm actually kind of going to do haul with showing you this new start because we talked about last week um, that it is the Baby Yoda that I'm doing for my nephew's birthday, which is in January, towards the end of January. Um, this is an Etsy pattern. Um, let's make crafts an Etsy shop called let's make crafts and um there's a ton of baby Yoda patterns and I just thought I don't know I like this one the best I think that it was maybe the cutest in my opinion I just really like this one and they had two patterns they have this pattern and then they have the same baby Yoda but it had like this background like this splotchy uh, rainbowy background in it I really like that one, but I was being realistic about the fact of stitching it that, um, you know, I didn't want to take that extra time. So I figured I would get that effect of the nice, you know, colorful background with fabric. So I looked through my stash and um, the only thing that I had that would work at all, I showed you guys, was this lavender opalescent, which I think would have been really pretty, but it just... Um, it didn't scream Logan to me, so that's why I was concerned about it. So I ordered three fabrics from, um, 123 Stitch. 
um, three pictures of plus fabrics and and so I'm showing you the two that I didn't choose first and then I'll show you the project on the one that I did choose um, so these were the the flosses all like greens and browns and um, so the first one, which actually I think is my favorite actual of the fabrics, but I didn't think that it went with the colors. This is Tempest. And again, these are all pictures plus. And I just got these little pieces. They were on like sale, so they were like four dollars, between four and five, between three and five dollars each. So they weren't that expensive. Um, I really like this fabric. But I just felt like the greens and stuff would, like it just wouldn't pop. It would just blend in too much. So I decided no on this one. Of course, it means I have a nice little really pretty piece of Tempest fabric to do something with at a later date. And then this one is Carnival. And again, this is pretty and it's got a lot of different colors in it um, but I just I don't know I felt like the browns and stuff would just kind of blend in too much so that one was not chosen so the one that I ended up choosing is what is it called this one here Phantom. So Phantom is a nice dark blue with some like purple splotches. And oops. And I think that that one um I like the way the colors pop off of this. And it gives me kind of a galaxy feel which just kind of goes with the whole theme of of the child. So so yeah, so I think it looks pretty good. And I'm about a quarter done. This is a quarter of the pattern. So that one is stitching up pretty easy. Now I will say that the picture of this plus Ada is beautiful. However, <clears throat> and I've noticed this also, this is the same issue in my, um, I have a piece of jewel that is what I'm stitching um, All Hallows Eve on by Glendon Place. So I've heard people, when I first started stitching, I heard a lot of people saying, you know, picture this plus Ada is the softest. And they were saying it in like this really like nice way. And it is, it's soft and it, it feels really nice to hold. But for stitching, in my opinion, soft Ada is not always the easiest to stitch on because it, the threads do not, they're not separated as easily and it's easy to catch like one of the extra, because Ada's made with like four four threads, right, in the weft and the weave. Um, it's easy to catch one of those little extra threads, and then that's what makes the stitching not look as precise, in my opinion, on Ada. Um, so stiff Ada, if it's too stiff, it's hard to work with, and if it's really soft, I think it's a little hard to work with. So finding that like actual um, exact balance in the middle is a great thing with Ada. Um, so, although I think this is beautiful fabric and um, and I'm enjoying doing the project, it's not like super, super, super easy because the Ada is so soft and you really have to pay attention to what you're doing um, while you're stitching. So, you know, my stitches are not 100% perfect on this project, but, you know, it is what it is. And I think... You know, Logan's not going to care. I think when the project's done, it's going to be fine. It's just when I'm stitching it, you know, and looking at it really close, you know, it's it's frustrating when the stitches are not 
completely perfect. Um, and I feel like they're not completely perfect. Part of it is because the fabric is so soft. So, okay. So the other whips that I worked on this week, um, just a couple. I, I brought uh, Black Grace to Thanksgiving. Black Grace one. Um, again, because this is very easy to stitch on. Um, doesn't require like high power glasses. Doesn't require, um, you know, it just is easy. So I got quite a bit more done down here. And it's coming along. When I pulled it out, my niece was watching me, and I'm like, how did you, and she said, you got a lot done since the last time I saw that one. And I'm like, yeah, do you think that I'll get this done before I leave? And she's like, sure, you can. I'm like, I don't think so. But, um, I may actually, if I keep do working on this, like, once a week, I may actually get this finished before the end of the year. Who knows? If I don't, I'll probably bring it with me on our vacation again, because it's easy to stitch on. Um... If I do get it finished, I might, like, bring the other one to start. Um, I don't know. I hate to make plans like that because that's the kind of plans that I inevitably, like, I say I'm going to get it done and then I absolutely don't. But, um, okay, I think I pulled, I pulled out a uh, Crosswing Collection. This is called First Encounter, but I call it Chickadees. I pulled that out to work on once this week and a lot of the stitches that I did are late so I don't know that they're gonna show but I started the other bird right here and I did some more down in the leaves This is, every time I look at it, it's just like, it's so cute. So I really like it. This project is also, uh, is on a 28 count even weave. And it, it's a, a very nice even weave. And again, it's got the right level of stiffness and creaminess and thickness of the fabric so that it's very easy to work on and um because it's 28 i find it uh relaxing i'm finding like 14 and 28 count um although not my preferred count for finished projects for working on they're very easy um and relaxing when uh like 22 count hard anger and 20 count Ada. I love the way the little tiny stitches look, but you have to pay a little bit more attention when I'm doing it. And, you know, depending on if my eyes are tired or my hand, I've been having some arthritis y pain in my hand. It's a little bit harder because the needles are smaller and it's smaller things to see. So, you know, definitely my stitching, um, what I pick, the project I pick is starting more to depend on how I'm like feeling that day or whatever, which I find is interesting. I mean, I have projects seriously ranging from 14 count or 28 count, um, all the way up to 25, um, 25 count one over one. <laughs> so I, ha I run that whole gamut and, um, and I enjoy each one. I, I do. So, um, I know people will be like, oh, you know, 32 count is their sweet spot or whatever. And I don't know that I found a definite sweet spot yet because I just like different things for different projects. Um, then the last thing I worked on was Pavane for Our Times, which is a long dog sampler pattern. Um, I decided to do this one instead of starting Pandemic, which everybody seems to be doing. And I just like this one better. Uh, you know, I there's no other way to... To, to say it. I like this pattern better than Pandemic. Um, and so I just decided to do this one as the 2020 Pandemic type stitch um, instead. And this one is on a 20 count um, Ada, an opalescent one, and I'm doing it uh, with a sulky 
and I got quite a bit more done which it doesn't seem like that because it's you know on 20 count and it's tiny but that's a lot of stitches in there so I got a lot more done in this area right here so this is gonna grow slowly slowly but surely um, I was watching um, Brenda Hamwort Maniac and she was talking about because she's stitching I think she has a couple long ducks actually and they were talking and she's doing it on Silky as well or with Silky and they were talking about how the border that's on almost all long dogs you know when you're doing it in sulky that if you don't use the thread normally or whatever you know that your your um, variegation won't be off and so people were saying different things and like she actually decided to do that outside border in a solid um, color and other people were saying that they use one specific sulky spool for that border so it exactly matches up and everything I have realized I don't care um, it's variegated and I don't know I don't think anybody's gonna be noticing that my variegation is not exact um, so yeah I, I don't know do you guys see a problem with my variegation? I don't think so. I don't think it matters. Not for me. Um, so I think when you get the whole piece done, I don't think that anybody would notice if the variegation is not exact on your border. But that is just me and how I feel about stuff. Okay. So that was all of the projects that I worked on this week. Um, I, I think I only had like one or two days when I didn't stitch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I worked on this one a couple days to get it done, and uh, so that took a lot of my time. Anyway, um, okay, so on to, like, haul. Um, I showed you the fabric. I only had, like, one little bit of an order come in from 123Stitch, and it was the fabric that I showed you, and then I, because I was, you know, putting in order, I figured I'd get another little Mill Hill kit, because um, they have them, like, kind of sometimes on sale, and... Um, and I got this one because I didn't really have anything to go on my um, my seasonal tree when it gets to be more spring. So I thought this guy was adorable. So I got him. So he will go in my little Mill Hill ornament pile and um, to work on soon. Um, okay, so let's see. I think that that's pretty much it for my regular stuff. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you all of the projects or kits that are going to be in my giveaway on my Hanukkah videos and give you the keywords for them. And then um, I would like to, you to, in a comment on this video, just list the keywords of all of the projects that you're interested in. And then I'll do random comment generator, as I said. And um, I have 16 things to give away, 16 kits. So I will be able to give away two on each video for the eight days of Hanukkah. And um, then I will mail them out. So obviously I'm going to have to get your addresses and stuff like that if I don't already have it. Um, I haven't started the whole, you know, Google form attached to my thing yet. Um, if I continue to do larger giveaways... Maybe I will, but I don't tend to do giveaways like every single video, so um, it's not that bad of a thing tracking you people down. <laughs> so um, if I don't already have your video, or your video, if I don't already have your address from like a previous win or because you sent me something because I tend to keep those addresses, um, then we'll have to connect with the address thing and then I'll probably be mailing them after the first of the year because I don't really want to have to brave the post office in December. Um, so yeah, so this will all go out for at the beginning of the year, um, sometime in January. So <laughs> with all that being said, um, let me get started and just show you what I have. So I decided that um, instead of like mixing charts and fabric and all that kind of stuff, these are all kits. So I have 16 kits to give away 
but they're not all cross stitch. I have cross stitch kits, I have some needlepoint kits, and I have some diamond painting kits. Um, so, yeah, so there's a little bit for everybody. Um, I encourage you, if you are just a cross stitcher, go ahead and put in, if you see one of, if the, one of the diamond painting kits is interesting, go ahead and uh, put, put that keyword in too, because it's always fun to, to find a new hobby that you might like. Um, so, and diamond painting is easy. I'm going to, you know, put in the tray and the, the pen and everything as well. So basically when you get it, you'll be able to do it. And yeah. All right. So let's, let's get started. Okay. So Okay, so the first thing is this Spring Florals bookmark, and this was like a little kit that came in, um, like one of the, you know, the Just Cross Stitch Magazine or whatever magazine it is, it always gives you a little kit, and I've been holding on to it for a while, and I really like it, and I so I didn't give it away in any previous giveaways, because I think it's really cute, but then I decided on this one, you know, I can make a bookmark. <clears throat> without needing this kit and it's just so adorable so I wanted to include it so this one is going to the keyword is going to be bookmark okay um okay second one this is a needlepoint kit um again it comes with canvas flosses and I think there's a needle in here as well um, it is a little bit opened. Um, I got this from an eBay purchase. I'll try and tape that up to make sure nothing falls out. But this is called Lovely Hydrangeas. Oh, and I'm getting glare. Oh, let's see. Does that help? No, not at all. Oh, well. <laughs> Lovely Hydrangea needlepoint kit. If you've never done needlepoint, needlepoint is fun as well, and um, you may enjoy it. So go ahead and put in purple for this keyword. I was going to put hydrangea, but hydrangea is hard to spell, and it's not intuitive. So purple for this kit. Okay. Next one. This is a Jamlin kit in anti-acid. It's called Grateful for Friday. This is a cross-stitch kit. Comes with the Ada, the needle, and the floss. And it says Monday exists. The main reason Monday exists is to make us really grateful for Friday. Totally cute. And the keyword for this one is Friday. Next one, this is another needlepoint kit. This is Dimensions, it's called Life is Sweet. This cute cupcake. Again, comes with your mono canvas and your um, floss. This is done with floss and a needle. And this uh, keyword is cupcake. Okay, the next one is, this is a cross stitch, All of Me Loves All of You, pink and green, those are the colors of my wedding. And this one is love, is the keyword. The next one is another needlepoint kit. This is called Baby Hugs. Um, it's called Baby Hugs. This is Dimension. Um, it's a needlepoint kit, and basically, it comes with a chart. Comes for all the letters, so you can pick whatever letter you want um, to make with the the contents of the kit. Um, but you're getting the chart for all the letters, so it'll be nice 
if you want to make other projects in the future and just pull your own flosses and stuff. This is floss. What is this? 12 mesh canvas cotton thread. So yeah, it's regular floss. Oh, and I'm sorry, the keyword on this one is initial. Okay. Next one, this is another uh, cross-stitch kit, Janlin. Um, this is called Our Baby. Cute little ducky. And it does come with the instructions for either doing the girl or the boy. And all the flosses for both. Um, or either, I guess. I don't know if there's enough flashes that you could do both, but there is the blue and the pink. Um, and this one is going to be, the keyword is duck. The duck itself, I think, is really cute. Like, if you don't want to do, like, the name sampler, I just think that that duck is cute. It could look really cute in a, bath, a bathroom. Okay. Next one, this is a cross stitch kit called Floral Cat. Comes with the Ada, the flosses, and the needle. And keyword on this one is going to be floral. Okay, this is from Designs for the Needle, hometown collection. It's called Backyard. And we're going to use the keyword quilt because of the quilt. And come to all the stuff. This is, is this Ada or is it you've made? 18 count white Ada. Okay. This is another one that is hard for me to give away. Uh, my friend got this for me um, from the, the Center for Creative Reuse in Pittsburgh. And um, I think it's adorable. I just don't know that I'm going to ever get to it. So I wanted to go to Good Home. It's a Janlin collection. It's called Dogs of Duckport. And it is adorable, all these dogs. And keyword is going to be dogs. Comes with your Ada and your floss. I don't know if there's a needle in here. Um, you know, it was open because it was from a... A, um, thrifted find but the keyword on that one is dogs okay. the next one is actually four kits that I purchased and I really wanted these and I got them and I love them but again I have so many things that I think would come before them that I decided to go ahead and um, share the love and so these are four Riolas kits they're the cats in the city series um, the keyword is gonna be city so you have the I think this one is spring Let's see. I'm gonna put them in order Enter. I think that might be summer I'm not sure which is spring and which is summer, but let's say this is spring, summer, fall, winter. So this is Riolas, the cats in the city, and the keyword is city. So this is all one, one uh, giveaway. we have 
two Christmas kits. So you guys know I ordered these specifically for you because they're not something that I'm going to stitch. So the first one, um, this is called Peace. It's from Just Cross Stitch Kits. Um, and the keyword is Peace. And it's interesting, this comes with the with Ada. Although, the model is obviously stitched on linen or an even weave. So I don't get that. And, and the model, it's funny, you can see where they like carried threads and stuff on the model. So I think it'll look better on Ada because you won't be able to see that. But... Anyway, it's really, it's cute. It's got the nice little angels. So this one, the keyword is peace. Okay, then this is a Butterick kit. Um, it's called 1936 Snow Globe. And the uh, keyword is going to be snow. I think this is going to be super pretty when it's done. I really like this one. Comes with the black Ada, all of the flosses. It's got some metallic floss in there. Keyword on this one is snow. Okay, and then the last three things are three diamond painting kits um, that I pulled from my stash that. I just decided I would share with you guys. So the first one, um, the keyword is going to be butterfly. I call this like maroon flowers and butterfly. Um, here are the, the colors. This is a round drill. Yes, can I see? Round drill. It is a full coverage chart. Um, and there's the thick. And that's kind of what it looks like finished. It's really pretty pinks and greens. Um, yeah, and it's round. It's got 16 colors. So this one is not going to be that hard to do, but it's a nice mid-sized chart. Um, so again, the keyword on that one is going to be butterfly. Um, <clears throat> this one, um, I'm calling it blue-eyed cat. But the keyword is just going to be cat. Um, it is only got 10 colors. It is also round row. The... And here's the picture of what it looks like when it's done. It's kind of, I think, like a Siamese with the striking blue eyes. So we're going to, yeah, say cat is the keyword. And then the last one that I have is a pastel Dalmatian. And unfortunately, this one doesn't have like a like a little picture on this the top, so I can show you. This one is also round drills. And so I'm gonna hold it back because I think you'll be able to see it better. So it's like a Dalmatian and he's like painting the Easter eggs. He's got a brush and the colored eggs. When you get up close, it's harder to see, but it's got lots of really pretty colors in it. Again, it's a nice, not too big painting to try out if you've never done diamond painting before. And the keyword on this one is going to be Dalmatian. Okay, so... 
the three diamond paintings. We've got Dalmatian, Cat, and Butterfly. We've got Snow, little snow globe, Peace. Those are the two Christmas cross stitch patterns. We've got a uh, city for the four Cats in the City charts by Riolis. These have the really pretty acrylic and wool uh, thread. We've got dogs for the Jan Lynn Susie Zoo Dogs of Duckport. We've got quilt for this hometown collection backyard cross stitch kit. We've got floral for this cool floral cat with the are these cone flowers. They might be cone flowers. <laughs> floral for that one. Duck for this our baby cross stitch pattern or kit I should say. Um, this is a needlepoint kit. Initial is the keyword. All of me loves all of you. Keyword love. Really cute pink and green cross stitch. Dimensions life is sweet needlepoint. And keyword is cupcake. Grateful for Friday. This is a cross stitch kit. Uh, Jan Lynn Anti-Acid. Keyword is Friday. Lovely Hydrangeas Needlepoint Kit. This one is purple. And then the Spring Florals Bookmark. Keyword Bookmark. This also comes with these little felt flowers. So if you can see on here, this and this. And that are little felt flowers that you stitch on, and it comes with the little flowers. Okay, okay so that is 16 things I'm going to be giving away. So there's eight nights of Hanukkah. I will be giving away two things in each video. Um, and yeah, hopefully we're going to have a good time with that. Um, I will see you guys again before Hanukkah starts, I will have a video next week, um, and maybe I'll go over those again really quick, but um, you'll still have to go back to this video to do the entry. Um, I think that's it, you guys. I hope, again, that you had a wonderful holiday weekend, if it was a holiday for you, and just a regular wonderful weekend if it wasn't a holiday, and um, that you have a really great week coming up. Uh, as we start December. I can't believe it's the end of the year. Um, yeah, it's this year has been so long and scary in some ways and you know, but we learned a lot of stuff. I think all of us have learned that, you know, we don't necessarily have to be able to get together to see all our friends because now we all know how to Zoom and do virtual things. Um, so I think that's a good thing. I think a lot of us have learned that little chores like going to the grocery store every week can be accomplished online with delivery. Um, that's a good thing. Um, we've learned about the people who are most important to us and you know how much we miss them when we don't get to see them and I think that's a good thing. Um, I hope that everybody who is watching this has had continued health for yourself and your loved ones and um, I'm very lucky in that the people that I care about the most have not had any illnesses during this scary time. Um, you know, most of the people I care about are also pretty careful about going out and not uh, going into big crowds, so maybe that has something to do with it, you know. Um, although there are those of us who can't help but having to go out. I mean, I still have to go out every day to go to work, so I'm still out there in the world. With my mask on <laughs> um, but yeah you know as we all go into this holiday season whatever holiday it is that you celebrate if you celebrate a holiday um, you know hopefully we can all keep gratefulness in our hearts and you know and hope hope the next year is going to bring um, renewal and health and 
uh, better happiness for people and better happiness for our world and our country and you know all of that good stuff um, anyway so I'm not gonna get all preachy um, I hope that you guys are enjoying the giveaways that I have picked out um, don't say giveaway uh, please be 18 all the stuff um, the whole don't say giveaway thing you know is just because there's bots that go and just look for those words and then enter things and you know I do want these to go to actual people who would want to stitch them um, that's why I'm instead of just pulling names or whatever I'm asking you guys to put in keywords so that you have the opportunity to win things that you actually would like um, because I know there's a bunch of different eclectic tastes in here and um, not everybody's gonna like everything um, you know and I don't want you to win something that you're like I would never stitch this so anyway so hopefully there's a couple things in here that that make you uh, excited um, I know that there are a lot of older things um, that I got you know from eBay purchases and stuff like that but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing you know sometimes the older the older kits or the older charts are are pretty cool and you can't find them anymore so anyway um thank you guys for for sitting through watching all that um I look forward to seeing what things are the most popular and what things you know um are not as popular and see you know where people's tastes lie um but anyway, uh, I think that's enough rambling for me, and I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you again next week, and then the Thursday after that is going to start the first night of Hanukkah. I'm very excited for that. I'm excited to be able to share it with you and share a little bit of trivia about it. Um, I am not an expert by any means. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to tell you guys, I got from Googling and looking on Wikipedia and all the sites as well because I don't know everything about everything, obviously. And um, I just want to be able to share a little bit of the traditions that I grew up with. So um, anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys have a great week. And until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.